Hi there, it's Linda from Behind the Scenes. Thought I'd um, add a few notes uh, to give you some context from where I'm coming from with bookbinding. I have minimal experience with bookbinding in general. I have tried Coptic Stitch, but I have not yet tried the uh, type of stitch that I'm going to be doing in this video, which is long stitch binding. I follow instructions from another video by C. Lemon, who is also on YouTube. I'll leave a link to the video in the description below. I do not demo how to do long stitch binding step by step, um, but I do offer some tips and tricks that help me check my work. In the end, it isn't without its flaws, so there are a couple of things that I would do differently, and I go over that in this video as well. I'm also getting the general concept of a perpetual nature journal from an artist named Laura Cole Gastinger. Um, she has a website and I'll leave a link in the description below. It basically works like a Hope and Itchy five-year journal, where instead of seeing one day over the last five years, you're seeing one week of observations um, for so many years. You can make note of, for example, when certain flowers or trees started to bloom for one year uh, versus another year. So I will need at least 52 spreads for 52 weeks and I decided on making seven signatures with four sheets of paper for each signature. This will allow for extra pages before the 52 weeks and a couple of extra pages after. The width of the artist paper is not exactly nine inches. It's just a little bit longer, I believe by about one to two millimeters. So I was careful to mark which side was up for each signature. That way when I mark holes, I'll know that there's half an inch from the top edge uh, to the first hole and a little bit more than half an inch from the bottom edge to the last hole. I chose the brand of paper that I chose simply because I had some leftover from a previous pad. I chose the type of paper I chose because Laura Cole Gastinger had mentioned that she uses hot press paper for her own journal. And the reason was when you're sketching such fine lines, the smoother the paper, the better. I already had supplies from a book binding kit from Amazon. Uh, looking back, I would not use this string 
um, I didn't wax the string either, but I did double the string while binding the stitch. Um, the cover is very durable, the paper is fantastic. The only questionable thing at the end is how durable the binding is. If I had to do this again, I would use fishing string, um, which I do have, but it's black. So if I did have to restring the journal, I would um, look for sepia color fishing string. So if you check out Sea Lemon's video, you might notice that the leather she's using is a bit thinner than the leather that I'm using. So she's able to cut the leather with an X-Acto knife. I still used an X-Acto knife, but only to score the leather before actually cutting it. This made it a lot easier to simply cut in a straight line. I do not have any leather cutting tools, so I simply used gardening shears, and I feel kind of lucky that that worked, although it, it was kind of tough to cut with gardening shears, which is why I'm going so slowly. <laughs> and I'm really nervous of uh, wasting such really good material. I considered briefly making this into a wrap journal, but in the end I stuck to the original plan and that was just to have a regular cover. I do not go over how to make a wrap journal because I choose to simply cut off the excess in the end. Now that I've punched the holes for the first signature, I have a starting point for each of the holes that are simply one eighth apart from each other going in a horizontal line. They all need to be parallel so that the pages line up correctly. To do this, I make a mark I'm sorry, which is out of view of the camera, at the far right of the piece of leather. This is so that I know how to position the ruler so that it's uh, parallel to the length of the leather as I'm using it as a guide to make the marks. At the beginning of C. Lemon's video that focuses on long stitch binding, she instructs you to leave a small loop at the very beginning of the stitching for the first signature. I thought that was a little tricky, uh, just to leave it like that without accidentally pulling it through, so I kept a needle um, where the loop should be until it was actually time to pull the needle through the loop. I also found it easier to string through the leather first and then go through the signatures um, because there's a lot of bulk to pull the needles through. I ensured that the string was taut after I had stitched through the entire signature. Now because I'm double threading, there are two strings which can be a little bit off, so when I was making sure that the binding was taut, I would pull on each individual string.
I may have gotten lucky with estimating how much string I would need. When I measured out the string, I measured it for each signature twice because I knew I would be double stringing it. And then I pulled another maybe foot or so, so that additional 12 inches was actually maybe an additional 6 inches. That gave just enough room to tie a knot in the end without much fuss. Uh, I like to use something to help me tie knots. It's very much like having somebody's finger there <laughs> to make sure that it's not moving around. But I'm using one of the, the picks, I guess, to keep the knot close to the page so that when the knot becomes unmovable, because uh, it's already tied, it will maintain how taut it was before. There's just one additional thing that I would do differently, besides using different string, and that is how I punch the holes through each signature. I was punching the hole from the outside to the inside sheets, and in a majority of the signatures, the inside pages slipped so that I got holes off of center. If I were to do this again, I would punch the holes from the inside out. This would require me to make the marks for the holes separately for each signature, but I did that anyway because it was tricky for me to make the mark all at once, uh, the way C. Lemon does it in her video. When you punch the hole from inside the fold, it's easier to pull the fold towards you, making the pages align at the center because they're all being pushed to fit in that triangle. When you're pushing from the outside in, you're opening the triangle so that the sheets are more free to move from side to side. I decided that it was important enough to punch new holes so that each page had the centers aligned, otherwise the pages would be off. At the least, it would make the string less taut and everything would be really loose because of it. So I have some additional holes in the cover and some additional holes in the pages, but that's not a deal breaker. I'm actually quite pleased with how it turned out, especially when it's my first attempt. So I think I'm going to really enjoy using this journal.